Hello and welcome to this guide for photoshopping tilt shift brought to you by photoguides.net. You can find the original guide at photoguides.net slash photoshopping dash tilt dash shift. The first thing you'll need to do is of course choose your photo and this is probably the most critical step because some photos simply will not work. Look for something that's from a high angle. After all, in a miniature world, which is what we're trying to create, you're never looking at things from their eye level. It's always from above. So this will help to create the effect that the world is small. This photo I've chosen, taken by Paul Williamson, overlooks Johannesburg in South Africa. I've chosen it because it's from a high angle, and also the content, that being the cars and the buses, are going to be very, very good for the tilt shift effect. So, once you've got your photo sorted, let's go ahead and open it in Photoshop. The first thing you'll need to do is enter Quick Mask Mode. Quick Mask Mode is a visual way of creating and editing your selection. You'll then need to select the Gradient tool and choose a Reflected Gradient. The Reflected Gradient will create your depth of field where your subject is in focus and the foreground and background are out of focus. You'll then need to draw your gradient. Start your line at whatever point you want to be in focus, in this case the bus, and then draw down to wherever you want your range of visibility to end. When you let go, a red gradient should appear. You'll then have to exit Quick Mask Mode by clicking on the icon again. Your gradient should disappear and be replaced by some marching ants. This is the point where you add your blur. Click Filters, go to Blur, and then select Lens Blur. Wait for the interface to open. You can then increase or decrease the amount of blur by adjusting the radius. Remember, too much blur and your image will look surreal. You want to try and balance it so that people can still make out what the background is. In this case, you can still tell that there are buildings there. Once you've tweaked your settings, just click OK. Once your lens blur has been applied, you'll have to get rid of the marching ants by either clicking on the canvas or pushing Command or Control D. We'll then increase the saturation. The brighter and more vibrant colours will make the scene look like plastic. To do this, go into Image, Adjustments, and Hue and Saturation. The amount you increase it by really depends on your image. Remember that increasing your saturation too much could overpower the colours in your image and thus ruin the overall effect. And that's really all you need to do. Anything from this point is just a further tweak. You may like to fiddle with the curves of your image. To do this, go into Image, Adjustments, and then select Curves. You can then create an S shape with the line of your curves by clicking on the top and dragging it up slightly, and then clicking on the bottom and dragging it down slightly. The difference isn't extreme, but as you can see here, it is quite nice and it adds to the dark points of your image, which makes it look a bit more like a toy. Cropping the image can also have quite a nice effect. For this image, I feel there's a little bit too much sky. After all, in a toy world, there isn't a sky. So by cropping some of it out, I'm adding to the illusion that it's a miniature world. And this is the final product. In just a few minutes, we've managed to transform a fairly ordinary photo into an incredible piece of tilt shift photography. You can find the original guide, along with written step-by-step -step instructions, and the original photo for you to try yourself at www.photoguides.net slash photoshopping dash tilt dash shift. I'm Ash Davies from photoguides.net.